warm welcome to York Minster and to this online expression of choral evensong, one of the most cherished services in the Church of England and one of the most popular services here at the Minster. Welcome if you are a regular worshipper and know the Minster well and welcome if you are experiencing this building and this form of worship for the first time today. We hope that you will find this service helpful and are very pleased that you are able to join us. We now keep a moment of stillness and quiet to rest in God's presence before the service begins. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall shew forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We now hear some verses from Psalm 46. God is our hope and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear that the earth be burdened, and though the hills be carried into the midst of the sea. The first lesson is taken from the first book of Samuel, chapter 24, beginning to read at the first verse. 
When Saul returned from following the Philistines, he was told, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Samuel took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to look for David and his men in the direction of the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheepfolds beside the road, where there was a cave, and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the innermost parts of the cave. The men of David said to him, Here is the day of which the Lord said to you, I will give your enemy into your hand, and you shall do to him as it seems good to you. Then David went and stealthily cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. Afterwards David was stricken to the heart because he had cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to raise my hand against him, for he is the Lord's anointed. So David scolded his men severely and did not permit them to attack Saul. Then Saul got up and left the cave and went on his way. Afterwards David also rose up and went out of the cave and called after Saul, My Lord, the King. When Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the ground and did obeisance. David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of those who say, David seeks to do you harm? This very day your eyes have seen how the Lord gave you into my hand in the cave, and some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not raise my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, see the corner of your cloak in my hand, for by the fact that I cut off the corner of your cloak and did not kill you, you may know for certain that there is no wrong or treason in my hands. I have not sinned against you, though you are hunting me to take my life. May the Lord judge between me and you. May the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you. As the ancient proverb says, out of the wicked comes forth wickedness, but my hand shall not be against you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog, a single flea. May the Lord therefore be judge and give sentence between me and you. May he see to it and plead my cause and vindicate me against you. When David had finished speaking these words to Saul, Saul said, Is that your voice, my son David? Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, whereas I have repaid you evil. Here ends the first lesson.
The second lesson is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 14, beginning to read from the 12th verse. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbours in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind. And you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. One of the dinner guests on hearing this said to him, Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, Someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time for the dinner, he sent, to his, sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of land and I must go out and see it. Please accept my apologies. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am going to try them out. Please accept my apologies. Another said, I have just been married and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to his slave, Go out at once into the streets and into the lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. And the slave said, Sir, what you ordered has been done and there is still room. Then the master said to the slave, Go out into the roads and lanes and compel my people to come in so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, None of those who were invited will taste my dinner. Here ends the second lesson. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit us on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Lord, who never failest to help and govern them, and govern them who thou dost bring up in thy steadfast fear and love, keep. Oh. O Lord, who never failest to help and govern them, who thou didst bring up in thy steadfast fear and love, keep, keep us, we beseech thee under the protection of thy good providence, and make us to have a perpetual fear and love of thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The choir now sing the anthem by Philip Moore, O Lord God of time and eternity.
May I speak to the glory of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. How do you compel someone to accept something that is good and worth welcoming? This single word, compel, has in the past been pulled out of this parable and used by some in the church to justify brutality and repression. Like Jesus's original hearers, they were sure they knew who was not invited to the banquet. It concerns me that this kind of thinking is being used even today to justify injustices. We must be ever watchful, ever prayerful and always ready to speak as a church when we see God's word being used in this way. I want to suggest this to you. Before we ever look to compel someone to accept something, whether that's a free meal or our point of view, or just to accept the way things are, first we ask ourselves, is what I'm asking them to accept good? By good, I mean of God. Now we need to be careful here because what's good for us might not be of God. This could be especially true if the way things are working works for you. We might be surprised by who gets invited to the banquet in our stead. We must be honest with ourselves and with others and clear when we have not acted with integrity, either as individuals or as a church. We are not the master. We are the ones who serve him. What we offer must be from him. And we must offer it with his openness, with his love and with his overwhelming generosity. We are not the masters of this banquet.